Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 Wii U Wear Review. Today I am going to be taking a look at Trying To Director's Cut. Now this is a game that I must admit I've been a little bit annoyed with. But before I get into that, I'll simply say at the start you can hit play. You can go into the settings where you can look at your language. You can choose some visual options which is like brightness and gamepad brightness. Um, you can choose some basic audio options. You can go into extras where you can look at paintings, poems and map pieces and that that you get through playing. You can hit play a game, you can play it single player, multiplayer or go into your save slots. Uh, for now though I'm on my own so I'm just going to be choosing single player so I'll cut into that before mentioning the hellish time I've pretty much had with the game. And it's not because it's a bad game, it's because I'm not too happy with the developer. Alright. Before I continue, I should probably mention I'm at the start of the game for the obvious reason, well, it, I'd hopefully think it's obvious, is the story does follow on for the first game. It's set a few years later. Uh, you play as Amadeus, Pontius and Zoya, who is the wizard, knight and thief respectively. And it is basically just like the first game, I suppose. Uh, if you like the first game, you'll probably like the second game. The problems I had is, as people might have noticed, I reviewed the first game on the PS3. So... I waited for the PS3 version of Trying To, which uh, in Europe took about a year after the States got it, so that was rather annoying. Then I found out that there was a DLC pack, the Goblin DLC, coming exclusively to the PC, so that annoyed me a little bit, but the PS3 version didn't cost me anything. I got it with Plus as their way of apologising for taking so long. Not the developer, Sony. Um, but the uh, exclusive DLC meant I had to buy it again on the PC. Then I found out the Wii U version actually has that same exclusive Goblin DLC and with a load of exclusive other stuff. For example, um, it, you get an extra level and they said they were going to have mini games and they're saying uh, of course obviously you can use the gamepad as well as the pro controller and all these marvellous things so I thought fine I'm going to have to buy yet another version of this game so I did just that and then when I get it I find out the only thing that's pretty much true is that you get the um, extra level free because the Pro Controller doesn't work as of yet. Uh, apparently they're rushing to do an update to get that to work. Um, the extra mini game type DLC they were making that was exclusive to the Wii U isn't coming out and they've said they're, they're too busy with trying three so it'll probably never come out and it's just one of those things it really did annoy me because it's the type of thing that it's really bad when big devs get away with this sort of stuff, but when little indie devs do it, it's an outrage almost, because they're the devs who are supposed to be leading the way, they're the ones who are supposed to be putting the big companies to shame, and instead they're, well, just doing the same old ploys and tactics, and it, it really did annoy me. But, that doesn't change the fact that it still is an absolutely amazing game. Um... It's basically, for those who haven't played, a bit of a puzzle platformer action adventure um, hack and slash type thing where the, playing as the wizard, which I'm doing now, means that you can do, um, you can like use telekinesis and that to move things. You've probably already seen as use a move a rock and I'm moving this box. I can create boxes and it's just, he's basically the puzzle solving character. You've got the thief who's the platformer character because you can use like a hook shot to hook on uh, platforms and jump around and swing around and the knight who's basically a big beefy bulk mammoth of a guy with a sword and a shield and he's very defensive with his shield and you have to use it to get past certain areas and then you also have to use his sword to kick the crap out of a lot of enemies however the, the other characters can damage things I'm, by like throwing boxes with a wizard and that and uh, I wouldn't really recommend that unless you absolutely had to um, and uh, the thief gets a bow and arrow or crossbow type thing and it is a three player game which uh, it's one of those you can either play it one player controlling all three characters individually or you can play it three player all of you controlling one character and it is just an excellent sequel there's a lot of work gone into it for the right reasons to make it an excellent title it's just a shame the way they've gone about with the whole this DLC will be exclusive to PC no way it'll be on the Wii U and we'll give you all the exclusive stuff no way it's actually we're not giving you all the exclusive stuff we were, we're too busy working on the third game and it's just like why 
It's especially annoying that the way you got the treatment of the extra content, or the promise of the extra content, I suppose, because it didn't even get the first game. It would have made sense if they'd at least released the first game as well. But um, anyway, I'm going to shut up for a little bit and uh, let you listen to some of the music, which I personally think is excellent. Graphically, I think the game looks fantastic. And then I'll continue with basically the bulk of the game, mentioning uh, the things that I haven't yet mentioned, like the upgrade system and the um, amount of levels and that. So that was a little bit of the music then. Um, just to quickly explain, uh, before I go further, there's 13 levels, there's then 6 levels from the Goblin DLC which is built in, you don't have to pay for it, you don't have to worry about it, you get it as the game. There's then the one extra level, so 20 levels total, which is pretty decent size. Um, add to that the 3 player co-op, then you're looking at one of the better Wii U wear titles, it's well worth getting even if you never played the first game, and if you have, then, well, you know whether or not you're going to enjoy it. Um, the blue orbs you've seen is collect, they're tied into your skill points that you get, you have to collect them to get the skill points. Uh, the power ups you can get are things like the wizard can make four boxes, he can get metal magnetizing, he can get a monster prison and monster levitation, the thief can get explosive, fire, frozen arrows, a stealth disguise, the knight can get a fire sword, a magnetic shield, a hammer explosion and a hammer throw and there's more power ups than that and there's also the ability to reset your power ups, you can go and hit start and reset them all so it's just one of those, you, you can just mess around basically with the uh, characters to see who you like best, to see who you want to upgrade. Obviously the ability to place more boxes is huge for the wizard and it makes puzzle solving or puzzle skipping I should say a bit easier because you can actually skip some puzzles outright with creative thinking and it's one of the things that people have slated the game for and I suppose fairly so because it seems like bad game design when the go to all this trouble to make a puzzle but then they actually make it so that you don't have to beat the puzzle you can just glide past it with a little bit of thought um, so it's one of those that that's a fair complaint as far as I'm concerned you've then also got uh, the things like the a floaty jump system which uh, ruins the game a little bit Not nothing major or anything it's still a great game that's worth playing it's just a bit of a shame that the uh, floaty jump does kind of make platforming sections a little feel a little unfair at times and you will more than likely get yourself killed but don't worry if you get a character killed because as long as you hit a checkpoint they'll come back story wise I quite like the story I think it works well the narration works well and the vo like it you'll just all of a sudden come to a point and then the narrator will speak and then something will happen there's uh, the, the voice acting on the game overall I think is actually really good and um, well there's, there's nothing else really I can say about the game it's an expensive launch title but a really good one it's well worth looking into if you want a co-op title or even if you want a single player title because it does work well it just works a little bit better if you've always got someone watching your back um, fighting the enemies and you've always got someone um, building 
boxes to get past puzzles and that and someone can be the thinker while the other's the brawn you know it's just one of those things though uh, it does work well in single player it's just like a lot of other games better in co-op so that really is all I can say about the game well no I haven't forgotten anything in the time that it took to record the vid the update that was promised has actually came out in Europe at least it's set to come out in New Zealand and Australia on the 31st of January and America it just says coming soon however the update for those who don't know and it's one of those things that it might tip you over the edge um, basically they've added German voice chat they've added sorry voice actors now they've added German for the story they've added voice chat for the online multiplayer they've added pro controller support and they've touched up the graphics a bit and the game definitely looks a lot better than it did before so um, that really is now everything I can see unless all of a sudden they do another update <laughs> so there we go then that's been the review I hope you found it helpful I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid, or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask, and I'll help if I can. Also, if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel, because there's plenty more like this up there, and don't forget to subscribe, because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.